In the aftermath of the January 12th disaster in Haiti, well over 200,000 people, men, women, and children, are dead. And that not simply because of an earthquake, but because of the intentional imperial economic policies forced upon the people of Haiti for far too many decades. Now, with the region's rainy season set to hit Haiti this coming May, the situation promises to get even worse unless affirmative action is taken now. Thus, Lyndon H. LaRousse Jr. issued an urgent call to have the United States Army Corps of Engineers working along with the Haitian government to immediately evacuate up to a million Haitians who are now homeless and living on top of piles of rubble and shattered Port-au-Prince. The immediate emergency, LaRousse said, is that the rainy season is upon us, and under current conditions, Port-au-Prince, within a month or two, will be subjected to floods, hit by mudslides, and become inundated in deadly sewage from the 1.5 million people who are now homeless and destitute in that city. These people have been forced to live in the streets and slums under ramshackle pieces of plastic and amid human excrement that is not being removed because there is no ability to do so, nor even a place to take it. Already, the rains have been falling heavily on Haiti, with its first major storm hitting the impoverished country as of mid last week. As of this past Monday, the rains have soaked through many of the inhabitants' makeshift tents where their roofs are made of scarves and sheets, reducing their living conditions to that of animals and, in some cases, living in conditions worse than animals. As a Haitian mother of four put it, Haiti's pigs live better lives than we do. The current rains have caused donated lanterns to swell up with the excrement that it contains and unearthing rotting sewage. And this is only the beginning of the dark age hell that LaRouche is saying we need to evacuate the Haitian people from. Because with the combination of the earthquake and the rains, which will intensify, a perfect breeding ground for disease is being created. Diarrhea, pneumonia, malaria, dengue fever, and typhoid are expected as potential epidemics by health officials. And with the conditions that exist, Haiti on its own will have no way to fight this. Though it is a nation of 10 million people, the country does not have a single sewage treatment plant to speak of. Trucks have often accumulated the human waste and other trash and proceeded to dump it on the tortier trash dump near the slums at the edge of a city. That site is now visited by survivors in search of food and wood to cook with. The millions who continue to reside in the Port of Prince in either homelessness or in tents, live crowded in the middle of a floodplain, surrounded by unforested mountains, putting the residents at high risk of flash floods, mudslides, and pools of water borne diseases like cholera and typhoid. If you didn't catch the drift, get those people the hell out of there. That can be done if LaRouche's emergency call is taken up. So if you're serious, Make no compromises and recognize that Barack Obama has to go. He either is put under impeachment or you force him to resign. Hell is the only future Haiti will have under this president. And as long as he remains, ask yourself, how many Haitians will die as a result of allowing Obama to stay in office? So do the obvious. Remove the jerk and proceed accordingly to prevent another wave of mass deaths and the total disintegration of a nation by rebuilding the Army Corps of Engineers along with the bilateral treaty agreement between the United States and Haiti to be promptly reached to evacuate up to a million Haitians from the coming situation. They can be brought into the United States on an interim basis and possibly into inland parts of Haiti as well. With a functional presidency, the United States can mobilize the capacity needed to conduct this operation. Our military capacity can be further used through the Army Corps of Engineers to either rebuild semi-permanent housing or reopen military bases with barracks, including those shut down under the BRAC Commission under George W. and continued by the current airhead. LaRouche pointed out that full reconstruction of Haiti will take up to 25 years, but in the short term, new relocation camps and even cities outside of Port-au-Prince will have to be built where the essentials of life can be provided, food, water, sanitation, a roof over their heads, and sufficient energy and electricity to make all this possible. Even under Michelle Obama's failure of a husband, the United States must act and act quickly. We should use such an occasion to remember the way the United States acted towards Haiti and other nations under the leadership of great presidents such as Abraham Lincoln and Franklin Delano Roosevelt. 
Under the latter president, America promised to break the yoke of British colonialism with his Bretton Woods fixed exchange rate system and assist the what were to become former colonies of the empire to develop technologically as the United States had done. Since that president's untimely death, the promise of economic freedom died with him and places like Haiti were subsumed by British imperial policies. That is why they suffer as they do now. So we must fulfill that great president's dream and do that which is simply our constitutional duty to secure planetary justice, dignity, and restore the commitment of morality that we as Americans once had. Thus, Obama must go. And with that, not only will we be able to initiate LaRouche's current emergency evacuation, but we can accomplish something much greater by eliminating the British international monetary system for a new international credit system geared towards productive development through a four powers alliance between the United States, Russia, China, and India.